So now we've looked at Edward, we're going to move on to the second uh, monarch within the mid-Tudor crisis, and that's Mary. Now, Mary was uh, the first official queen in English history. So there was a, a bit of a dispute with uh, Lady Jane Grey. If you remember from the last video, however, what Mary did was she took the crown and then she established royal supremacy, royal sovereignty. So there's no doubt that Mary was the first queen in English history. And her reign is seen in more of a negative light. However, she did begin her reign relatively well. She began her reign well by defeating Northumberland, as we saw in the last video. Uh, and unlike Edward, she was not to rule in name only because Edward ruled under the protection under the protection of Somerset and then Northumberland but Mary wouldn't do this Mary would rule in her own uh, regard and she would be involved as it says here became fully involved in the business of government so this is how we can really distinguish Mary from Edward in this regard okay so, during the reign of Mary I, there was no big change in government. There was no constitutional change, almost, okay? The Privy Council remained the centre of administration, and one problem with Mary's council, it was too large to conduct business. And when you have a council that's too large, it becomes difficult to conduct business because there will be too many opinions, too many opinions and decisions as a result don't get made so decisions do not get made so with that it's e it seems easier to have a smaller uh, privy council to look at the administration of government in a lot more detail rather than having these huge uh, almost parliamentary uh, privy councils which don't actually help with government and slow down the process of legislation and some of her ministers also had no real political ability so these where we're coming into the issues with Mary's government okay so for this reason the first weeks of her reign were dominated with Mary choosing councillors and choosing councillors that uh, she supported and who supported her because at this time Mary's reign can be described as um, really the centre of Mary's reign Look, is the issue of religion, which is why there was a rivalry between Catholic Catholicism and Protestantism. So Edward was a radical Protestant. So Edward, Edward was radical, radical Protestant. And his, to be fair, his Protestantism, his uh, radicalization almost, came about uh, throughout his life. His quite short life, but his life nonetheless. And he uh, was in a lot of conflict with Mary when he was king, because Mary was a devout Catholic. So there was a conflict there, and as we see, it it shaped the the sort of centre of administration in the government, because the Privy Council was made up of Catholics and Protestants. <laughs> So, the main uh, leader of the council was Sir William Paget, or Paget, who led the nucleus of the council. He was the one that the inner ring of the Privy Council, so the inner ring, ring of Privy Council, he was the one that dealt with this, and almost... Um, almost was in charge of the other councillors. Okay, so at the start of Mary's reign, we start to see uh, some issues starting to develop in government. However, these issues were not as bad as between um, between religious. But when it comes to government, her government was far too large. Her privy council was far too large. So as a result, as she developed and in during her reign. Uh, she started to work with a smaller inner council, and this also included the Spanish ambassador Simon Renard. Okay, so the only problem with this 
section here is as she got the council became smaller she made less use of it so the council became less important so the importance of the council diminished okay so it became less important and then by the end the relationship between her and her ministers weren't weren't good at all they had deteriorated <clears throat> okay so Mary's had a political inexperience so she wasn't a strong legislator uh, legislator sorry she um, really didn't have much uh, experience within the uh, issue of running government which became a problem considering that she inherited the crown so it was seen as the first major issue during her reign the fact that she wasn't politically savvy and then on top of that issue we have the idea of the marriage and the succession okay so because this was the she was the first monarch uh, who was female there was some issues about who she should marry mainly because if she marries uh, someone does that person then uh, have a greater entitlement to the throne if and when she dies or even if she's still alive because he is male that was one of the main issues and so the Privy Council was divided on who she should marry some believed Edward Courtney the Earl of Devon others believed Philip of Spain now Philip of Spain um, was an interesting example because if people who didn't want uh, Mary to marry Philip of Spain didn't want her to marry him because they didn't want they didn't want a Spanish monarch a Spanish monarch and this is important this is an important thing to, to note they believed that um, if Philip of Spain was to take the throne he would become a um, have a relative power within England and a lot of people weren't a big fan of that however some people did favor just the link with the Habsburgs through the marriage to Philip so the idea of him taking power in England was um, not the greatest however the idea of him having have of us having an alliance with Philip and with Spain um, made more sense to them and one other issue is that she announced that she was going to marry Philip of Spain without even consulting her council. So the decision wasn't made politically, it was made more by her and her alone. But luckily, the treaty, the treaty that we can see here, oh, the treaty uh, was relatively favourable for England. So Philip was to have no real power in England, which almost diminishes this this issue here. They didn't want a Spanish uh, Spaniard to have um, great power and authority, while Philip would have no real power in England, so it didn't matter. And if the marriage was childless, the crown would pass to Elizabeth. So one of the other issues was that Mary and her sister... Uh, Elizabeth the issue was if we just go uh, Henry this is a very uh, rudimentary family tree they believed that if Mary was to marry Philip and if Mary was to die without any children the crown would pass to Philip down this route down this route which would make this which would have a Spanish monarch in England However, this was not to happen in the treaty. The treaty explicitly uh, specified that Elizabeth would take the crown, which is what happened in the end anyway. So overall, the marriage to Philip had most of the advantages of having a link with Spain and none of the real downsides. The only problem with it is it began to um, influence her religious ideology Despite the fact that she was already very strongly Catholic, her marriage to Spain reinforced uh, her marriage to Philip. Sorry, reinforced the fact that uh, she was going to impose Catholicism on England. 